How's it going everybody? I'm the Game Disciple, and you're watching the teen portion of my Let's Play series. <clears throat> if for anybody that doesn't know, I have a children's, a teens, and an adult portions for my Let's Play series, so that games that are for older people, you'll know, and they'll be in their own playlist. Um, this game that I'm about to play is Siberia 3. I have not played any of the other Siberia games. I do have, I have played this one a little bit. But I haven't played all of it. I've played a, about an hour and a half, two hours maybe. This is a puzzle game that is is a little bit darker than you might think. So some disclaimers is anyone that has problems with disease or uh, any kind of like body horror. It's not that bad, but it's it's definitely there's definitely some stuff there. Um, anyone that has issues with feeling trapped or any any such kind of thing um this is probably not the video or the game for you so <clears throat> that being said uh let's get started and see what god's word has to show us through this game its story and its characters ah it's very snowy love the snow ah <sighs> Also, uh, these games that are not mainstream, that you can't really find much footage of, uh, these games I'm going to be using all of the footage so that you guys don't have to look up some Let's Play from somebody that may not have as good an attitude as I do. <laughs> um, there might be people out there with better, but I don't want to chance it. So, non-mainstream games, I'm going to do a full Let's Play, like, all of the footage. Whereas more mainstream and more popular games will just maybe get a video. I'll play all the way through, but they'll maybe get one or two videos before they get the review. I found her, found her on the in a in a boat by a river in the middle of a snowstorm with what looked like almost no warm clothes on. <clears throat> Three months ago, nomads found her dying in northern Siberia. Walker, Kate Walker, born in New York in the United States. She had an American passport on her. She showed up at the clinic last week. She's recovering. She's fine. You're certain, Olga Efimova. You have to keep her there until we arrive. I will do what it takes. You can count on me, Colonel. <clears throat> there's the colonel there's Olga forgot what that dog's name was so she's been here for three months or she was picked up by the nomads three months ago oh, we don't Necessarily. Hello, Kate Walker. I don't know how long she's been here. Uh, hello. My name is Kirk, Kate Walker. Kirk of the Yukol tribe. Captain Kirk? Do you remember the Yukols? Sorry. <laughs> Where are we? My memory's all mixed up. There was a terrible blizzard with snow and ice, and then nothing. We are in the clinic of Dr. Zamyatov. a very dingy place. In the town of Valsambor. How did I end up here? We Yukos migrate with our snow ostriches to the sacred lands. It's a long journey. A very special journey. One month ago, we found you dying on a riverbank there in the north. One month ago. We took you in and our shaman cared for you. 
Afterwards, we continued our journey. And today, we are both here to finish getting better. You lost a leg. It was an accident, you know. Some people don't like nomads like us. But don't worry about me. Dr. Zamiatine asked a master craftsman from Velsenborg <coughs> to make me a new leg. And he's going to put it on me when it's ready. It will be like a brand new leg. Why are you tied to that bed? That was the decision of Madame Olga, Dr. Zamutin's assistant. She says I'm too restless, and it's the only way to make sure I get better. Apparently, it's going to take a long time to make my artificial leg. And in the meantime, my people are without a guide and are waiting for me, with the herd, so we can continue. Why do the Yukols make the journey? My people live in symbiosis with the great snow ostriches, Kate Walker. Yeah. Their wool protects us from the cold. Their excrement feeds our crops, and their meat feeds us. They are also our mounts and beasts of burden, so we must follow them wherever they go. And do they migrate because of the weather? No, Kate Walker. They go to the sacred <coughs> lands to reproduce. It is an event that only occurs a few times per century. For the Yukals, I'm, I'm analyzing everything they're saying. The boast of having participated in more than three migrations during one's lifetime. Oh, there's so much talking, but I like to analyze all of it so I can get it in here. All right, uh, let's go back. Well, oh. I'm delighted to have made your acquaintance. I guess I have to go tell the staff that I'm awake, I feel fine, and I have no intention of hanging around here. Of course, Kid Walker. I'm sure someone will be in the yard. Maybe even Madame Olga. All right. I normally would go through all of the dialogue options, and I might. I just didn't want to do it all at once, because that's a lot of talking. Um, <clears throat> okay, there's the way out. Um, okay, I can make her move faster. Kirk's tribe's camp, I guess. What's that owl doing here? This must be Valsambor, the town Kirk told me about. All right. What's around here? There is a chest with a stick through the uh, the bracket there. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, <clears throat> a push broom, a bucket. Okay. Is there anything here? No. See all the medicines there, but this is an incredibly dingy room. My goodness. <clears throat> I would be horrified if I woke up in a place like this and they said it was the hospital. Like, the hospital. Like, yeah. They have some hot soup there. Um, and some bread. What? Hello? Is anybody there? I don't think anybody heard you, Kate Walker. Try using the call button that's located next to the door. All right. <clears throat> mm. Nothing. It doesn't work, Kirk. Hmm. I think I saw some of the staff using it the other day. Take a good look at the mechanism, Kate Walker. Maybe you can find a way to get it working again. Let's see. This diagram shows how to turn the call button on, but I can't do anything until I can get at the internal mechanism. Search the room. 
I'm sure you'll be able to find something you can use to open it up with. That should do the trick quite nicely. Now try to use it to see if you can repair the call button. Yep, I have had to use a knife as a screwdriver before. I don't want to do it again, but... Not a chance. Oh, that was the wrong thing. There we go. <clears throat> oh yeah, I forgot you to... Have to sorry. You have to, you have to use the, the joystick to unscrew it on manually. Let's get this out of the way. There we go. There we go. And that's good. Or is it? No, it's not. Ah, okay. So they had it unhooked from the power, and then they had the actual mechanism that's, that actuates um, pulled away from the, the front button. <clears throat> just have to find a supervisor well done Kate Walker I'm going to have a bit of a rest now please try to come back and say goodbye to me before you go all right Kirk Let's see if we can get you out of that bed and this place is incredibly dingy my goodness I know I've said that so many times but it's ugh. okay <coughs> Go hold your head under the ice water in the fountain, Nikita. That'll clear up your damn headaches. Not his time. This isn't a normal headache. It's like a pile of rusty nails rattling in my skull. Well, that's you settled then. Did you speak to Madame Olga or Dr. Mongoling? No. Maybe they're the ones sticking the damn nails in my head while I'm asleep. Nail through the nostrils. It's just like I told you. The only thing the doctors want is for us to get better. We'll go see the birds in the aviary later. It helps calm you down. It's even recommended when you have nails in your head. So there's obviously some weird stuff going on here. What's this guy got to say? Have you seen the mammoths too? Go tell the staff. That way maybe they'll believe me. And have you seen any dragons too? See. So you're finally awake. Has <laughs> Dr. Olga been informed? Get your bearings. I understood that you'd be staying with us for a little while yet. So that guy says we're going to be staying here a while. <clears throat> but we don't want to stay. Why in the world are there so many vines growing here? That's just awful. And it's snowing and freezing outside, but it looks like they have the windows open. Ugh. I don't like feeling trapped. It's weird. I really tried. I tried to tell them I was a whole lot better. They just wouldn't listen. No way. The light, the wind, the heat. I can still feel it all. I dream of it every night. It sounds like an explosion to me. <clears throat> mm. <clears throat> yeah, that, sound, that reminds me of an explosion. And based on all the, the stuff on their faces, could be... I mean, um, I'm just speculating. I've never actually figured out what was going on with this game. I only played a little bit before. I don't know. What's, what's this guy got to say? I know he's got the little dot there. There we go. Come on, 
birds in the aviary are beautiful. My mother would have absolutely loved them. She, she loved birds. Always did. Up to the end. Automaton birds? So, yeah, this is, uh, this is a very strange place. Hmm. And that little notification up there just does this. So they have a fish pond in the hospital, which would mean this is more of a psychiatric ward than you know, the clean room type hospital you're supposed to be in. And checkered floors would give it away too. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, let's go talk to the doc maybe. Finally awake, number 10. What can I do for you? Well, it seems to me that I'm cured. And now I'd like to be on my way. Given your condition, that would seem somewhat premature and perhaps even unreasonable, number 10. When another huge red flag is they give you a number and they will only refer to you by that number, Hmm. Your psychic troubles would seem to be significant indeed. I assure you, I feel perfectly fine, Doctor. I don't doubt you. But you were in fact very ill. In your case, we should really be cautious. So you're refusing to let me leave? Oh, no, of course not, miss. I have no intention of abusing any of the prerogatives of my position. Nonetheless, first you must submit to a series of tests that are designed to demonstrate that you have fully recovered. You understand. Please, sit down. I... On that? Yes, yes. Don't be afraid. <clears throat> what the... Don't worry about these restraints. Merely a simple formality that's part of the protocol that Dr. Olga, our supervisor, has implemented. Right, I do believe that we can begin. Now, be so kind as to state your first and last names, age, and place of birth, please. My name is Kate Walker, I was born in New York, and I'll be 30 this year. Good. Good, miss. Up until now, my device would seem to corroborate what you say. You're using a lie detector? It's the procedure. Please stop worrying and talk to me instead of your friends and family. Are you on good terms with them? It's, a, it's another, another lie of the enemy. Is They'll try to convince you that everybody's lying to you. <clears throat> Do I need to repeat the question? No. I cut off with them. I haven't had any news from my mother for weeks. And Dan, my fiancé, left me for my best friend Olivia. You seem to be basking in this chaos and anarchy, Miss Walker. Is this inclination for disorder connected to this Hans Vorlberg and Oscar? You spoke about them at length while you were delirious. Oscar was a kind of automaton, very special, very sophisticated. You know, sometimes it was as if he was almost alive. He was designed by Hans Varlberg. Hans was a genius. The last of a long dynasty of precision machinery manufacturers. We went on a very long journey together. Then we landed on a small island in the sea called Siberia. 
Hans knew that there was still a herd of mammoths there that had survived from prehistory. Hans was obsessed by mammoths. Mammoths? Imagine that. It's a strange story, uh -huh. I admit. But I assure you it's the truth, Doctor. To be honest, what I'm interested in, Miss Walker, is that during your travels you were in contact with the Yuko people. The nomads who brought you here to Velzenbor. In your opinion, what should we fear from such a primitive tribe of savages who understand neither law nor border? Refusing civilization and settlement. <coughs> well, first of all, they have a civilization. Just because they haven't joined yours doesn't mean they're savages. Do I need to repeat the question? No, I'm answering your question. You just can't hear me. Anyways, they should be left alone. Uh, they should not be made to settle down. I think, Doctor, that the Yukols live in harmony with nature, time, and space. This should they have, have no the Lord witness to them. To change the way they live. Now that is an example of typical American idealism. Maybe you should go back to New York right away. I'm sure your brilliant ideas will be justly appreciated there. Hmm, I see. In a way, your silence is quite answer enough, Miss Walker. So you intend to continue your journey through our country? A hazardous undertaking with neither goal nor destination. Pity for a brilliant New York attorney who seemed to have a gleaming future. That's not for you to decide, Doctor. For the rest, I think I've demonstrated throughout this interview that I present no psychological <coughs> after effects from my injuries. I would therefore like you to authorize my release now. Of course, of course. Do calm down, Miss Walker. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but I'm not used to being interrogated like this. Some years ago, I would have okay. interrogated you in a very different manner, Miss Walker. I grant that I may still feel some nostalgia for the good old traditional methods. I'm sure you do. You're one of the very last representatives of a world that is fast disappearing, Miss Walker. A disordered world that no one will miss. Hmm. This and who decides like you, what order looks like? Unstructured and uncontrollable. If you're able to find a way to use it to leave this floor, then you shall have proved that you are permanently cured. I would like to get my things back before I leave. You will find them there. <clears throat> All right. Turn around. So we've proven that they have no reason to keep us here. <clears throat> And that the only reason they're keeping us here is because they just don't want to let us go. Now, we know there are other reasons, but right now, that's the only reason they really have. They specifically just they have their own agenda. I'd like to know what they're doing here. Why do they have all these people here? Why does everybody look like they have uh, radiation poisoning? They've got and they've got those lesions on their faces. It, it really does. It looks like everybody's got radiation poisoning. What are these guys talking about? Dr. Olga. We should perhaps say hello. And he is besmitten who thought to besmite. <laughs> besmite. <laughs> Get it? Dr. Olga. We should perhaps say hello. <laughs> okay. It still burns. It still burns. Even
even after all these years. Hmm. That guy was talking about mammoths and dragons. He might, he might be that person that we see in a lot of stories. It's like, he sounds crazy at first until later on you're like, oh, there was something they saw that resembled that or, you know, or there, there's actual mammoths and dragons. There's, you never know. He could be talking about the birds outside. Someone should have a word with the maintenance department. Those, uh, the, 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 the massive, you know, birds that Kirk and they use. Someone should have a word with the maintenance department. Oh, at least they have pictures up on the wall that are just like nice and open and free. Ah, oh, looks very nice. Because, my goodness, I'd have to stand and look at these pictures and just be like, I am not in this place. I'm, I am escaping. <sighs> Please don't. Please don't, uh, what's this, uh, don't, don't slip into disrealization. <clears throat> uh, what's it called? D, D person, D, D realization is what it is. So it's, it's a kind of, uh, disassociation. Don't do that. It's, it's not okay. I did it for a long time. Hey guys. Hello. <clears throat> and who might you be, miss? Yeah, who are we speaking to? Uh, my name is Kate. Kate Walker. Kate? Kate Walker? That doesn't sound too local. Yeah, so how did you get here, Kate? Kate Walker? The Yukels brought me here. The Yukels? They're nothing but chicken thieves. A whole bunch of scumbag morons doing nothing but infesting the streets of Valsambor. Yeah. Now they've come here to do their dirty work. Uh, you mean Kirk, I suppose. For 20 years we've been in this clinic. Since we got back from Baranor. Listen, this place has always actually been a quality establishment. I don't mind admitting. So we were pretty disappointed when we heard that Madame Olga is now letting in those degenerate scumbags from up north. Come it's a on, hospital. Anton, come on. Madame Olga knows very well what she's doing. She must have her reasons for letting those midgets in here. First of all, guys, it's a hospital. What do you mean letting people in? And also, you've been here for 20 years. You went, you came from Baranor. Came back from Baranor and you were admitted into the hospital. You guys have the same lesions that everybody else has. However... Look up close, it looks like what happens when someone doesn't wash their face and it causes infections and stuff from their pores. But at the same time, the other guys out there have really big, like, lesions on their face, which doesn't come from just not washing your face. <sighs> hmm. I don't know why I'm racking my brains over this. A place. It's a goddamn hellhole. What are you talking about, Anton? That's all I have to say about it, Kate. Kate Walker. Can't stir up the past. So they don't want to talk about Baranor. Why have they so been here for really 20 years? Been here for 20 years? Yeah. At first, we were kept for observation with some of our buddies after that damn mission to uh, Baranor. Leon and me, we're almost the last ones still here now. We don't know what happened to the others. Gotta say, some of them were pretty bad. Worse than us. Some guys who got it pretty bad. Fortunately, Madame Olga looks after us right. They look after us nicely here. Yeah. She looks after us good. She's a real lady, if you want my opinion. Can you tell me where the exit is, please? It's there. Wait, you won't be able to leave until you've had a but meeting. You won't be able to leave oh. until you've had a meeting with Dr. Mongo Ling in his office. Yeah, he's the one who knows if you're cured or not. I'll be leaving you then, gentlemen. Goodbye. Okay. See you around, Kate. Kate Walker. Yeah. See you around. So, we've already had our meeting with Dr. Mongolin. Let's see what we can do here. <clears throat>
see. So we solved the puzzle. I don't understand. The key. It didn't work. I did warn you, you know. You can't be at all well enough yet to deserve to be released already. To deserve to be released. <clears throat> There's another lie from the enemy. As he's like, you don't deserve this. Answer me, please. You, you will wait. He tells you that you you don't deserve to have whatever. The problem is Jesus makes you worthy. Do I need to repeat the blood the of Jesus makes you worthy? No, you don't. You'll just be patient. He Jesus makes you worthy because of what he did on the cross. So you don't have to deserve it. Mm. Your all of God's would seem to be significant indeed. All of God's promises are yes and amen in Jesus. So yeah, once again. Another lie the enemy loves to use against us. <sighs> it's not rare for a lot. There we go. No, there must be a problem with your damn key. Our keys are somewhat old, I will admit. But they've never failed me yet when called upon to do their duty. Well, there's a first time for everything. You can see that I, love I the key looks like a squid. And that I it's am fun looking. Cured. I have the right to leave. Impossible, Miss Walker. The rule is very clear. Only those patients who are capable of opening the door may leave this floor. Just a second. Okay. <sighs> Ask for Madame Olga. Since you won't help me, I want to speak with your superior, Dr. Olga. You can do that when she comes by to see you for her daily visit. But please don't count on me to disturb her before then. I'm um, sure. Your job is to keep as many it's people here as possible. Key. That's obvious. I need to find out where it comes from. Specifically, she's not supposed to leave because they are interested in her somehow. The light. The wind, oh, the heat, nice. I can still feel it all. I dream of it every night. Be reasonable, please, Miss Walker. I'm sure that with our treatment, in a few months, you'll regain all of your faculties. And you'll be able to leave the clinic perfectly cured. Hmm. I want to know what they're supposed to be curing me of. I thought I just had extreme hypothermia. Well, guys, I think that's a good place to stop. Um, I'm not going to play for that long on these episodes because there's there's no point. It should be. Oh, you can see his reflection. Anyway, <laughs> um, I'm not going to play for that long on these episodes. I'm, I'm going to try to keep the episodes a little bit shorter because it's all of the gameplay at once. So that being said, um, yeah, I kind of like this game. Uh, this is a very creepy hospital. Uh, yeah, I, I'm already thinking of all the ways that I would get out. And they don't really involve <laughs> following the rules. But, um, yeah, that would defeat the purpose of solving puzzles. So, God wants me to, to play games that I'm not necessarily used to, player. Anyway, <clears throat> let's just call it quits. And we'll, we'll see. I hope you see you guys later in a different video. And... Play your games, guys. God said it's okay. Be blessed. Amen.